Good morning, Coastal Alabama. I am Doug Ingram. I'm the chairperson for this year's Diplomat Committee, and we're uh, glad to be here today for another webinar that will be pr presented here in a little bit. But uh, we want to take this opportunity to welcome you. Okay. We're glad all of you are here, and it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Uh, he grew up in Jackson, Alabama. Anybody? That is not Jacksonville, that is Jackson, Alabama. How many people have been to Jackson, Alabama? It's my hometown. There, there you go. That's awesome. So there we go. Clark County, which is for those of you that aren't from Alabama, that's just north of Washington. So Mobile, Washington, then Clark County. We're glad that y'all, uh, he and his wife now, live in Orange Beach. Uh, they graduated from the University of Alabama. <laughs> okay, and uh, so they have been visiting uh, our area as they grew up, so they've watched our growth. Now they're excited about being here and being in real estate. So let's give a warm, oh, I left out the most important part, their boss, uh, who is uh, three and a half, and his name is Beckett. So let's give him a round of applause. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, my name is John Wayne Latham with the Remax Paradise. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking you, Ed Rodriguez and Derry Richards and Doug Ingram and the Coastal Chamber for uh, hosting this event, getting y'all put together. Uh, Ed and Dara work overtime behind the scenes, uh, making sure that they get the advertising and the marketing out know, so you all can be here today, and I greatly appreciate that. I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, I, th I think we're going to have a lot to cover. Um, I'd also like to give uh, a thank you to uh, my brokers, Bob and Susan Shallow. You know, it was, this is my third full year in real estate. Uh, he, it took me about six months. Uh, Bob convinced me before I finally took the jump and uh, accepted the offer that uh, he gave me. Uh, but I'm, it's the best decision I ever made. Um, there will be a question and answer session once this is over. Uh, presentation is probably going to be around 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, feel free to take notes. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have once it's completed to the best of my ability. Um, if, if you ask me a question, I'll make the answer to you. I'll get with you and get your contact information and make sure that, that you get that. Um, the hardest part about the speech is certainly not standing up here and talking to you guys about real estate for 30, 40, 45 minutes. I absolutely love what I do. Um, I could talk all day, but I know uh, all of you probably have somewhere to be after this is over, so I won't keep you here too long. Um, how lucky are we to live where we live? Um, we have so many things to do. Um, so many family-friendly things. So many things for adults to do. Um, you have the War Fan for Theater, the books on the biggest acts in the music in industry. You have the Hangout Music Festival. Uh, gets us a lot of global exposure because uh, it's televised uh, pretty much year round. Um, I get a lot of big name acts. Um, so many restaurants to go check out. Uh, a lot of boating activities, water sports. Uh, Orange Beach hosts the SEC softball tournament, and uh, the the hangout hosts the NCAA volleyball tournament. That gets us a lot of national exposure. Um, we have a lot of things to do that larger metropolitan areas don't do. And if you look at the, the statistics, uh, Orange Beach is right around 15,000, 16,000. Uh, no, no, Gulf Shores is right around 15,000, 16,000 full-time residents. Orange Beach is a little over 7,000. So with a population of about 22,000 people, you know, we, have, we have all this to offer. Um, So uh, here's another thing to do. Oh, I don't know if y'all been there yet or not. Um, it's very reasonably priced. You can get a season pass for right around seventy-four dollars. Um, but this is kind of an overview of their master plan. It's a five hundred twenty-acre uh, destination resort uh, located in Foley, Alabama, right at the corner of the Beach Express and County Road Twenty. Um, they just now finished the first phase, which is the fourteen-acre twenty-one ride amusement park. Uh, I know they have plans to add a, a water park to that as well. 
Um, they have a lot of shopping, dining, and retail options. I know a lot of the ladies in here are probably excited for Wahlberg, Burger Safe, and hoping they can get a glimpse of Mark Wahlberg if he shows yes. up. I uh, don't know if he'll be here yet or not, so we'll have to take a wait-and-see approach. Um, again, it's interconnected to the sports tourism industry that we have down here. Uh, 40 million plus in Folly Lawn. Uh, Going to have a 150-room Marriott uh, town place and suites. 154,000 square feet of retail, dining, and entertainment space. 14-acre uh, uh, amusement park. 14-acre uh, lake with a one-and-a-half-acre island. It's going to be one of the larger man-made lakes uh, in the country. Um, this you can see is kind of an overview of uh, some of their architectural drawings. The park itself is going to have different themes. Uh, you can see right here, this is, this is going to be one of the themes. It's going to be uh, picking a theme of time throughout American history, and that's going to be the focus for each different phase. Uh, it's going to be very unique. Uh, it's going to add a lot of uh, growth and opportunity to the area. Uh, you might even see uh, your condos book up a little bit more in the off season. Because I don't know that everybody, if they come down here to go to Owa, is going to want to stay right around Owa. A lot of people probably still want to come to the beaches. But uh, average increase in Baldwin County's economic input output will be $109 million. Uh, average increase of $64 million in payroll in the South Alabama region alone. Uh, employment, over 2,000 permanent jobs. Uh, one of the reports I read said it was going to create a little over 5,000 temp jobs while it was being completed. Why is that huge to this area? Um, it creates jobs and sustainability. Uh, for, throughout history, uh, if you look back at the area, we've always been a huge vacation destination. But we've always been a little bit more transient than other areas. We're quickly transforming uh, more and more every day from a vacation destination to a permanent destination. Uh, if you look at the, the, the demographics, 55% of the people that are moving down here are age 55 or older. Um, and I don't know if you saw the last report, but uh, there's also talk of Baldwin County being in the running for uh, a Toyota and Mazda plant. Mm -hmm. If they get that, that'll be located in North Alabama or North Baldwin County uh, around Bayman Net, and it's going to create an additional 4,000 permanent jobs. So you're looking at a, a growth of around a little over 6,000 jobs in a matter of a few years. Also, what's happening in Mobile is uh, contributing to the growth here. I sat for D.R. Horton over at Wellborn Lakes Estates last year. Uh, they had four employees from the Airbus facility. that uh, They all bought a home in the same neighborhood, and they take turns carpooling to work every day because they would rather be over here than in Mobile. Uh, another trend that's leading to uh, the growth in the area, if you look, uh, a few years ago, uh, before the spotlight was really on Baldwin County, uh, there was a lot of talk about the growth that was being experienced in Tuscaloosa and all of it. AL.com uh, did an article that interviewed one of the CEOs that uh, decided to place his business in Auburn and uh, their technology part right there. And they asked him, why Auburn? And his response was, more and more, they're looking at the quality of life for their employees away from the job site. Uh, what do they have for them to fill their time with? What do they have for the families to do? Uh, happy employees typically tend to be a lot more productive. Well, you know, Tuscaloosa and Auburn, Football's king here. We live in the state of Alabama. We talk about college football 365 days a year, 366 if it's a leap year. <laughs> and so that, that was a huge economic driver for them. Well, down here we have the beaches. Uh, we have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. And the secret about Baldwin County is out. Everybody wants a piece of the action. Uh, so that, that's going to lead me to my next point. Uh, kind of a little general overview of uh, real estate in coastal Alabama. The majority of the growth is really happening around Spanish Fort, I-10 South. Uh, most of the growth around Spanish Fort and Daphne and Fairhope is happening to the east and the south. But it doesn't matter. Anything I-10 South, it's a here today, gone tomorrow type market. Uh, been showing property all over Baldwin County this year. It's the same in Loxley, same in Robertsdale, uh, so especially here in Gulf Shores. Uh, I've seen people, I've been in several multiple offer situations. Uh, in Gulf Shores, and I've seen people put in a property, uh, an offer on a property without even seeing it. Uh, they'll, they'll put an offer in for just about full ask with a contingency that they can come look at it at a later date before closing. Um, we're quickly entering a seller's market. Uh, a healthy market, you need, is, 
You need a six month supply of completed homes for everyone currently in the marketplace and expected to enter the marketplace for the next six months. We're probably about two to three months at best. Baldwin County is the eighth fastest growing county in the country. It's the second largest division for DR Horton outside the Dallas market. Think about it, Dallas, Baldwin County, pretty big difference, pretty telling. Four of the top five fastest growing cities in Alabama, right here in Baldwin County, Fairhope's leading the way. The only one in the top five that is not in Baldwin County is Huntsville. And they're experiencing their growth from, from a lot of tech, technology industry and military. Um, there is some help on the way. Uh, DR Horton has plans to build a 900 home subdivision up in Daphne. Uh, they also have plans to build a 440 home uh, subdivision down here in Gulf Shores on County Road 6. But it's going to be a while before we actually see that provide some relief to the market. Uh, DR Horton's not the only builder in the area though. You got uh, DSLD, Trulin, Adams. They all have a strong presence in the area. They all have a quality product. They all do things a little bit differently. Uh, so, you know, you, it's up to you to decide which one you want to go with. <clears throat> so this right here is a graph uh, kind of showing you what the market said. June of 2006, you had right at 300 closings. So you can see over time, June of 2017, we're just shy of 700 right now. We'll ever double. Everybody wants a piece of the action in Baldwin County. Uh, I mean, just, I was reading a report this morning. The median sales price just from March to now has already increased from $225,000 to $232,000. So, I mean, that, that's just a few months' time and you're looking at a $7,000 difference. Uh, I'm just going to give you all a little bit of this one right here. <laughs> As a, I'm going to give you all a little bit of a general overview right now. The uh, things you need to be aware of when you're in the market, whether you're buying a condo, whether you're buying a home, whether you're buying property. Uh, some agents get a little creative and they say, we have a policy, we need you to sign this paperwork before we can show you any property. You don't have to. They, they probably feel a little bit better about it, but it's a relationship and relationships are built on trust. I don't necessarily feel that sticking a piece of paper in there is going to be very vague and open-ended and you know, tie you down to a relationship for a year or more. It's a great way to establish trust. Um, so so be, be aware of that. Um, earnest money. You're not required to put earnest money down, uh, but it's, it's very, very helpful. Uh, it lets the, the sellers know that you're serious. They'll entertain your offer. Uh, typically, it's between 1% to 2% of the sales price. Uh, for your, your cheaper properties, you can get away with, with less. Uh, a lot of times some people are just happy to see any earnest money, but if you're dealing with higher end properties, especially condos, the more money you put, put up for earnest money, the better it is. Uh, and when you put up earnest money, please make sure that your agent uh, protects you. If there's any doubt whatsoever uh, that you'll be able to close, if there's any questions, if, if, even if it's just 0.001%, Make sure they put some type of wording in there so you're not out to earn as money if something does happen. Uh, most of the time it only takes about two minutes to, to write a little contingency in there and you can't put a price on peace of mind. Uh, potential pitfalls of, uh, of the home buying process. You always need to worry about inspections, appraisals, termite reports, and, and financing issues. Uh, when it comes to an inspection, you know, they're, they're going to come in your house, they're going to spend two, three hours, they're going to get in your attic, they're going to take pictures, they're going to check your AC, they're going to check your hot water heater, they're going to check everything, they're going to find a leak. Um, sellers are not required to make any repairs, but, but it's a huge negotiating point once you get in, into that position. Uh, you don't ever like to see a whole lot of red on the first couple of pages, because uh, that, that, can, that can kill a deal in a hurry. Uh, when it comes to appraisals, again, I think that's the way every real estate agent feels when we're writing for an appraisal report to come back. Uh, appraisals are the luck of the draw. Just to give you an example, I had two properties listed side by side last year. They were both nice. One of them was a little bit nicer than the other one. Uh, had both of them under contract at the same time. The one that wasn't quite as nice appraised for $1,000 below the sales price, but no big deal. Buyers came up, we closed that one. Didn't have too much to worry about. 
the other property, which had about $10,000 more worth of upgrades, ended up appraising for $20,000 below. So we had to negotiate. Luckily, the, the buyers came up halfway, the sellers came down halfway. That's about as fair a scenario as you're going to find. And that's probably the only time I've seen it happen where it was a, a dollar amount of $10,000. Um, it, because the, you know the, the buyers had to had to pay out of pocket for that type of money. That just tells you how bad they wanted the property. Um, you know, appraisals are done by an independent third party. They're contacted by the lender. Agents don't typically. We don't have any contacts <coughs> unless they're going to call us and ask for access to a property, ask us a specific question. Agents aren't allowed to talk to the appraiser. Totally independent third party. Your lender has a rolling list. Uh, it'll be names on the page, and it's the next man up. So appraisals are really the luck of the draw. Um, termite reports, huge in this area. Uh, AL.com had an article on the Mobile Press Register early this year. Mobile County leads the nation in termite damage. If you do not have a termite bond or some type of treatment on your property, I highly suggest you get one now. Because especially down here, we have the subterranean termites. If they get in your home, they're gonna eat 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They don't take a break and they will cause massive destruction. So I'm gonna transition into uh, what to expect when you're looking for, for a condo. Uh, whatever you're looking to buy, land, condo, home, always get pre-qualified, always. Can't tell you how many times I've been working with somebody and they think their budget's 400,000 and come to find out it's 150. Um, the more information we have up front, the better job we can do of helping you. That's our job as agents. We're here to protect you. We, we work, if you're a buyer, we work for you for free. The seller's gonna pay us. Uh, we wanna make sure that you don't have any pitfalls along the way. We wanna make sure that you find a property that you like, uh, but we need to know what you're gonna qualify for and what you're comfortable with. Otherwise, we're just running in circles and we're, we're all wasting time. And, and, and that'll give you a really good idea of you know, kind of what to expect. And always be transparent with your lender. Always. I mean, I know it's annoying. The, 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 the mortgage companies, they want all the information down to who was your imaginary friend when you were six years old. <laughs> but your lender's going to find it out anyway. It's better to be up front with them so if there's a potential issue, we can get out in front of it. Or it might not be the perfect time to buy right now, but they can certainly give you some tips and pointers to get you on the right path and get you there soon. And they're going to find it out anyway. Um, I always try to convince my, my clients to go with the local lender. Uh, I don't care who you use. I, I, it's, as long as they can get it done, it does not bother me. A lot of people like to try to use their hometown banks, but we live in a coastal, coastal market, coastal region. Uh, banks are very risk averse. So they don't like, if they're not familiar with it and deal with it every day, they might tell you they can do something. You'll get three weeks into the process, be a few days out for closing, and maybe we, we can't. We can't close, we can't issue a loan. So then you gotta start the process all over again with another lender. Then you have to run the risk of losing your earnings money because the seller might not want to extend. They have that right. If you can't make the closing date, the con now typically in the contract, it allows for 10 days. But if you talk two, three weeks, a lot of sellers, it, it makes them a little bit edgy, a little bit anxious, and you don't want that. Um, Another thing you need to be aware of is uh, the jumbo, jumbo rate threshold uh, starts around four hundred twenty-four thousand uh, dollars. If you're buying a higher-end property and you're, you have enough money to put down to get you below that, even if it's four hundred twenty-three thousand, I highly recommend you do it because uh, that's going to increase your interest rate one to two percent, which is very expensive over over time, especially thirty years. Um, and they're going to send out a condo tell questionnaire, anything with the word resorted. Anything with a check-in counter on, on the grounds or the premises is considered a condo tail. That will also raise your interest rate one to two percent. And if you're selling a property, uh, especially an investment property, you definitely want to have an attorney involved for a 1031 exchange. Um, capital gains taxes are floating right around 28 percent right now. Um, if you don't have an independent third party that holds your, your money in an escrow account, the, the government's going to make sure they get their fair share. Uh, if you didn't do a 1031 exchange, you can swap one property for another one. Uh, you have 45 days to identify the property and 180 days to close 
on that property that you identified. Um, if you're on the fence, you know, maybe you can get financing, maybe you can't. You can use the rental history or the rental projections if you're going to rent the unit out to be able to get approved for financing, but you're going to have to classify as an investment property and you're going to be looking at 20 to 25 percent down. You'll be taxed at a rate of 20 percent. Um, picking a winner. A lot of decisions go into buying a condo. Um, so many variables at play here. Uh, do you want pre construction versus existing? Uh, pre construction is nice because you know it's going to be top of the line. You're not going to have to worry about assessments for, for, for quite some time. Uh, everything's going to be new. They generate a lot of buzz uh, and they appreciate very quickly. Uh, pre construction, especially if you get in on the ground level, can be very lucrative. Uh, you know, there's a couple of projects that I'm going to highlight here in a little bit, and I'll, I'll touch on those. Uh, you also need to identify what's important to you. You know, uh, are you looking at just strictly for rental income? Or are you looking at, because if, if you are, that's great. You know, we, we can go find units all over the place that, that can produce a, you know, a good rental income for you. Uh, but most of the time, people will say that, and then when they get involved in the process, they want something a little bit newer, a little bit nicer. They want to be able to brag to their friends about it or invite them. Uh, you know, if you're just looking for, for a great rental producer, you can go get a unit at Gulfview or Seahorse or somewhere like that for minimal cost, and that's going to be a great rental because of the location and the area. Uh, but again, a lot of people want something they can take a little bit more pride in, something that you know newer, something they brag to their friends about. Um, if boating is important to you then maybe you need to look along the bay or the little lagoon area or uh, the canal. Uh, they have condos over there. Most of those are going to have boating facilities. You're not going to have your boating facilities on your golf front condos, but you do on the bay side. Uh, but it's a give and take. Uh, you, you know, the, the boating might be great, but the rental income is going to be as lucrative a market as it will be on the golf. You're always going to have a, a, a greater desire for people to be right on the golf more so than on the bay. So that's something to take into consideration there. Uh, and most, most of you, especially all River, a lot of those complexes have first come, first serve uh, slips available. Uh, some of them have slips that you can purchase or that come dated with the property. Uh, some of them have, have rental slips. So that's like Caribe. They, they kind of get the best of both worlds there. Uh, they have a really nice marina there. Um, also, what's your ultimate goal? Uh, you know, where you want to be, I always ask my clients, where you want to be in one year? Where you want to be in three years? Where you want to be in five years? Uh, the reason I ask them that, say you get approved for 300000 but you can't find anything that you really like in that price range. So it might be better for you to get one or two smaller units that produce a positive cash flow, hold on to them for a couple of years, let the property values accrue, let the rental income put, help you put some money in the bank. Turn around a couple of years, sell both of those, and go get your higher end condo that you want. I saw that scenario play out last year at Sugar Beach. Older couple. They owned four units at Sugar Beach. Now, they did a great job. They were probably four of the nicest units in the complex that I've ever seen. So they held on to them for a little while, let the property values come back. They sold every one of them, went and paid cash for unit Kareem, and still put money in the bank. So, you know. You may, might not be able to, to find or afford a two-bedroom right, right now. The biggest thing is, is entering the market. You know, you can get a one-bedroom uh, that, that produces rental income. The sooner you get in the market, the better. Because if you wait around, chances are you're going to wait until your price completely out of the market. Um, you always want a 10% capitalization rate minimum on a condo. That's not going to get you to break even point the majority of the time. Uh, typically, you're going to need to be up around 13 to 15% uh, to start seeing a little bit of a positive cash flow on the majority of the units, but it will get you very close to that break even point. Uh, if you rent it out, the renter is going to carry the bulk of the burden. You're still going to have a place to come enjoy down here at the beach, bring your family, uh, and, and still be able to make some money with it. Um, a lot of things that go into association dues, taxes, rental income, amenities association strength, assessment, all those are going to factor into a decision when you're looking for a condo, especially if you're looking at it for, for rental purposes. <clears throat> you need to know how much the HOA fees are. What do they cover? Because uh, if it's the off season, sometimes they can get a little bit slow and then you're going to have to carry carry that burden of paying paying the note and 
for, for, you know, for the off season. So that's something you want to take into consideration. Amenities. That's like Kareeb. Kareeb rents so well. Uh, it's not right on the beach, but again, you have the kind of the best of both worlds. They have a trolley system. They give you a little card whenever you check in there. You call that 1-800 number. The trolley comes and picks you up at the front door of your building. You can load up all your beach gear. They take you down to the beach, drop you off. They run until 7 o'clock at night. Get ready to go. Call them. They come pick you up, <coughs> load all your stuff back up. They drop you right back off at the front door of your building. Uh, that's one of the very few complexes that actually has enough space in, in pools that even during 4th of July week, you're, there's plenty of places to go. If one pool's full, you can go to another one. They all have indoor outdoor pools, hot tubs, uh, weight rooms, uh, putting greens, basketball courts. All that adds to the enjoyment and the demand that uh, you're going to see in the rental market. Um, you definitely want a strong association. Uh, you, a strong association is going to help you uh, keep your property values higher. Uh, you're not going to have to worry as much about assessments. Um, typically, they're going to have a lot more money in reserves. Uh, condominium complexes, by law, in the state of Alabama, are required to have at least 10% of their operating budget in reserves. So if their operating budget's $1 million, they need at least 100000 The more they have, the better. Uh, if they don't have the required amount, it can be very hard trying to sell a property uh, because lenders don't like to issue loans if there's a deficit in that operating budget. And you're going to be looking at a minimum of 20% down. Not everybody has 20% down to, to go past, especially when you get up in the $400,000, $500,000 range. Um, now, you're not required to have insurance on a condo uh, because the condominium complex is required due to the Condominium Act of 1991. They have to have enough insurance on the complex that it can be built back in just as good of or better shape than it was before it was damaged. So the insurance that you're going to be getting with a condo is called an HO6 policy. It's basically going to cover your contents and liability. It's a condo. You don't own everything. The common areas are owned by all the owners have a stake in that. You own basically from the sheetrock in or from the paint in of your unit. So your policy only needs to cover contents and liability, uh, which is huge. You definitely want liability uh, in the litigious society that we live in today. You're going to want that liability coverage if you're renting it out. You can also attach some riders to, to your uh, policy that will offset the cost of lost rental income in the event of a hurricane. And they will also cover assessments up to $5,000. So there's different riders that you can attach to those policies that give you additional coverage. And you want to be aware, if you're getting a uh, condo to rent out, you're, you're going to want a trusted uh, property management company. Typically, there's a couple of companies that charge <coughs> around 15%. They're, they're a little bit smaller. Uh, typically, it's going to fall between 18 and 30%. Um, but you want to make sure that they, they have a good cleaning crew and they can keep it booked out. Because uh, they're, they're, they're definitely going to take their cut. You know, you know if you did $30,000, uh, you know, and they're charging 30%, you know, you're looking at a pretty significant check you cut to the property management company. Um, there's great deals on several properties I get asked all the time. What's some, where's a property that I can go put 20% down and generate a positive cash flow? Kareem <coughs> is one of them. Your two bedrooms at Kareem will allow, will allow you to do that, depending on how they're furnished. Seahorse. Uh, Gulf View, uh, there was a unit that sold at Gulf View last year, sold for $135,000, did between $28,000 and $32,000 for rental income. It's a pretty good return on investment. Um, the, any of the cottages right now, cottages at Romeo Beach, Little Lagoon Pass, those, those rental projections are right around fifty to 55000 And they're priced, you know, between three three seventy five and, and four hundred, dollars depending on which one you're looking at. So, I mean, that, that, that would be a good one that you could go uh, put 20% down and get a positive cash flow. Uh, these are a little, uh, couple of cash flow estimates. Uh, so if you're working with an agent, most agents have, you know, most of us have a spreadsheet like this and we can uh, plug and chug the numbers and we can send it to you and kind of play around with different scenarios. This is a unit that I sold last year and actually sold again this year. The lady had to relocate to Oklahoma for her job, so she had to move from Baton Rouge. Breaks down everything. This was just, you know, a scenario of purchase price of 155,000, uh, down payment of 25%. So total out-of-pocket expenses with your estimated closing costs of initial investment, 42,586. 
Uh, now, the interest rate right there is a lot higher than what we're seeing right now. Typically, you're looking at about four and a quarter uh, at the moment. Uh, and over here, it breaks down everything. It's going to add your taxes, your utilities, your contents and insurance, and it's going to total it all up so you're, you know kind of what your ballpark, what your expenses are going to be for the year. And then this is, this is including the property management fee. Uh, so you, you can generate positive cash flow of $3,191. And this was a, a cash flow estimate that I did for one of my clients that could read. Um, now this unit is actually still available on the market. Um, uh, so it's, it's been on the market for a little while. You can probably get a pretty good deal on that. If anybody's interested, give me a call. I'll be happy to show it to you. Um, but purchase price of $415,000, 20% down. Uh, total initial investment, 93956 Good news is you're below the jumbo loan threshold, so that's that's going to be your estimated monthly mortgage note and payment. Uh, over here, this is going to add your uh, annual uh, monthly expenses, and uh, you can see I projected forty-eight thousand dollars in rental income for that unit at a fee of eighteen percent, and they would net six thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars, twenty percent down. So there are some deals to be had. Um, now, I want to talk to y'all a little bit. I was talking about pre-construction earlier. You got Abaco right there on the left and Kareeb on the beach right here on the right. Uh, Abaco is going to be hands down, by far, the nicest condominium complex Gulf Shores has ever seen. Uh, they teamed up with Melanie Martin uh, Interior Designs. Everything she touched turns to gold. Uh, she's the one same uh, interior designer that worked with uh, Kaiser at Kaiser's Little Doom Pass. And if you haven't been in one of those units, they're nice. Um, the units are going to range from three to five bedrooms, uh, going to be 77 units on 24 floors, going to have a lazy river, zero entry pool, indoor outdoor pool. Uh, it's actually going to, the indoor pool is going to have a sliding glass partition. So when the off season's here and cold weather hits, they can close it off, and it's going to stay at crisp 90 degrees in the indoor pool. Um, but the finishing packages, you have three different packages that you can choose from to finish it out, uh, furnish or not. If you have not seen the finishings on Abaco, wow, go check it out. They are super nice. Um, rental income projections on that are uh, between eighty-five and one hundred five thousand. Um, and when we got the estimates, we got them from pretty much every property management company in the area. So uh, that's, that, that gives you a good idea, and you, you could probably do a little bit more than that. Um, the one on the left is going to be Larry Wireman's latest project that he's going to bring to you. For those of you that don't know, Larry Wireman built Turquoise Place. He also built the original Kareed Towers. So you can see from the pictures that architecturally it's going to look kind of similar to Turquoise Place. But it's going to have the strength of the Kareed name and more amenities than what you have at, at Turquoise Place. Um, pricing on Abaco is going to range from $735,000 to $825,000. Um, pricing on Creed on the Beach starting at $820,050 and ranges up to about to around one point three for your five bedroom units there. Um, I have not seen any rental projections on, on the units at uh, Creed on the Beach, but they'll do extremely well. He's basically combining the best of both worlds from Turquoise Place and Creed and putting them in one building. Uh, you're going to have your dash grills built into the balcony there, so you won't have to stand in line uh, 4th of July week, and you won't have to get out in the rain if you're trying to barbecue. Um, why buy a condo now? The South leads the nation in vacation homes, man. It's no different than right here in Alabama. You know, if you look back at 1996, we had somewhere around 6,000 total condominium units available. Now there's over 14,000. They're building more every day. Um, goes back to the laws of supply and demand. This is my third full year in real estate. My first two full years, we always had a running average of between 901 and 1,352 units available at any point in time, active on the market, ready for you to buy. Earlier this year, inventory in February was around 901 units. Then it dipped. In February alone, it dipped to 700. Now we're dealing with right around 550 units. So demand's up, supply's down, right? Prices are going up, interest rates are going up. 
it's getting hard to hit that 10% capitalization rate. That's what I'm saying. If you wait, you're on the fence and you wait, you will price yourself out of the market. Even if it's a one bedroom unit, the sooner you get it, the property value is going to accrue. Uh, you can get positive cash flows with one bedroom units. That's why, you know, again, where you want to be in year three and in year five, we can cater a plan to get you where you want to be. But you got to be comfortable with it. Um, now I'm going to cover a few things of what to expect when uh, you're purchasing a home. Again, can't, can't harp on that enough. Get pre-qualified. Get with a lender. Uh, there's a lot of good programs out there for first-time home buyers, whether it's a USDA loan. USDA is great. No money down. You can get full closing cost assistance. Uh, typically, especially in this market, when you get closing cost assistance, it's going to be factored into the loan amount. So a few things you need to be aware of there. You know, if you buy a home for $145,000, you need $5,000 in closing cost assistance. Uh, the home has to appraise for the $150,000, but if it does, you can finance your closing costs. So you can, you can actually walk out of there with the keys to a house with absolutely not a penny down. Um, FHA is a great program. FHA, you can get away with 3.5% down. Again, that's geared more for you know, first-time home buyers. Uh, and there's actually a new program out that uh, I heard about the other day from, from one of the lenders that... Uh, if, if you don't qualify for FHA or USDA, uh, there's a program they have where they can look at your bank statements, I believe, and they require you to put 3% down. Well, if you have really good credit, the lender will pay 2% of it. So they're only having to pay 1% out of pocket. Uh, brand new program. I don't know anybody that's used it yet, but I'm looking forward to, to, to find somebody that could use that program. Uh, Alabama's caveat in tour, which means buyer beware. Burden's on the buyer. It's on you to determine what you're getting. Unless there's a latent defect that's going to cause the house to fall down or cause some health issues, then once you sign those closing documents, it's your responsibility to pay for it and deal with it. Um, you know, that, that's, that's the issue with Alabama being a caveat on tour, which is why you always need a home inspection. Always get a home inspection. And when you're looking at a property, make sure your agent asks as many direct questions as possible. If he asks a general question, mm, how's the, how is the roof working on you? Yeah, that's general. He needs to ask, is there a leak in the roof? Has there been a leak in the roof? Is there a problem with the AC? You have to ask a direct question in order to get a direct answer. Because if you ask a general question, they can respond with a general answer and justify it. Um, one question I get asked all the time about foreclosures. Don't see nearly as many of them in this market, thank goodness, as we did during 2007, 2008. Uh, but something to be aware of if you buy a foreclosure home, you need to be aware of the right of redemption laws. Uh, they just switch from 12 months to six months in, in Alabama. And uh, if you buy a foreclosure, if you go in there and do any, any um, uh, improvements to the property, say you spend $50,000 to renovate it, then if they redeem their rights to the property, you're out that money. They have every right to redeem the home, and you know, unless you work out an agreement with, with them on something, you, you, you can be out the money. Um, and differentiating between a want and a necessity, deal with that all the time, especially when you see couples. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you have a couple of kids, so you really need three or four bedrooms. Uh, but the wife wants a fireplace or a pool. Uh, not as many homes. You see a few homes with fireplaces, not as big a need for it down here. Uh, we typically only have to turn them on probably once or twice a year. Uh, but they, that's something to take into consideration. You know, how bad, how big of a deal breaker is it for you? Great, great compromise on a pool is maybe find a, a subdivision or a neighborhood that actually has a community pool. Uh, there's a few of those around. Stonegate Estates has a nice one. Louder Place has one. Beaver Creek has one. Uh, Glen Lakes has one. Hidden Lakes has one. Uh, Peninsula has a nice one. So you know, those are all things we're aware of. Um, and pools, a lot of times, I'd much rather have a community pool than my own pool, simply for the fact that it's going to keep my insurance rates a little bit lower, and it's also uh, going to keep my overhead lower. 
and, and my, I, I don't have to spend the time taking care of it. Somebody else can pay for it and deal with it. That's typically going to be including your HOA fees. And then a uh, buyer beware. Uh, you <coughs> definitely want to be aware of your zoning. If you're in a flood zone, they, you know, they go through and adjust the map periodically on that. You definitely want to be aware if you're in a flood zone, that can make a huge difference in your insurance, rates, especially in Cobra Zone. Cobra Zone, gold standard is not going to help you. Um, and you're looking at, you know, I see several of them, especially down Fort Morgan Road, between sixteen dollars and $20,000 a year annually. <coughs> that's, a, that's a pretty pretty big chunk of change. Um, gold standard versus not. Uh, you know, there's three levels of the rating. You got your gold, silver, and bronze. If your home is not gold standard, the best you could ever hope for it to get to is, is going to be a silver. Um, gold standard is great. Uh, it cuts your insurance costs in half. Uh, a lot of people don't know what goes into a gold standard home. Typically, your trusses are going to be every 16 inches instead of every 32. So your, your, your ceiling is going to be a lot stronger. Um, you're also going to have the... Um, the covers that you put on your doors and windows is like a Teflon type material that uh, if a storm's coming, you can take the pegs off and put that up. Number one's always gonna be your front door. Uh, it goes in numerical order around to the right. Uh, so one is gonna be your door, two is gonna be your window to the right. And you just work your way around the house. That will not prevent your windows from getting broken, but it will prevent a two by four debris that gets picked up by a storm coming in your house and causing utter destruction, which is huge. Uh, if you can keep that to a minimum. And if you don't have that, then most likely you're going to have the high impact glass windows, which are rated to sustain wind at 175 miles per hour. Uh, also, your, the frame of your house is going to be bolted to the foundation. Uh, they go through there. And these, make sure you get to see the certificate. Uh, I've heard a couple of people that in some of the D.R. Horton subdivisions, uh, no knock on D.R. Horton by any means. Uh, but they were in a time crunch, and in order to get that certificate, it has to be inspected throughout the building process. Uh, so if they're on a time crunch and the inspector needs to come tomorrow, but they need to get, they feel like they need to get sheetrock up today, if he can't see it, he can't give them the certificate. So you're not going to realize the savings on your insurance. So you always want to make sure, because you might have a gold standard home, but you need that certificate or your insurance company is not going to uh, sign off on it. Um, and Again, uh, with the gold standard, uh, before Ivan hit, we built what was considered Alabama building codes. After Ivan hit, they decided they want to start building to uh, federal building codes. That's when you start to see the ratings, uh, and the gold standard really come into play. Pretty much most of your homes and properties are being built today. The majority of them are being gold standard, especially being here on the coast. That's what everybody wants. And your builders and developers are well aware of that. So. Typically, you don't have to worry about any, really any home after 2013, from what I've seen, uh, for the most part, you're, you're going to have the gold standard rate. So I'm going to transition into uh, when you're selling the property. A lot of variables at play with this one. Uh, what to expect when you sell a property? What do you have? First question you need to ask yourself. Uh, you need to know about zoning. Uh, location. Um, if, if you have vacant land uh, and it's not gold front property, if, if it's zoned for you know RMH, uh, RMS six or RMH, that's going to be a lot more desirable to a developer because they can fit more properties. If it's RMH six, they can put, fit uh, six uh, properties per acre, uh, whether it's a, a duplex or an apartment. Um, so that's going to add some value in their eyes. Um, you know. If it's a heavily wooded lot, is the timber worth anything? That might be a way to entice an investor to buy that because they can kind of offset the cost of, of buying the property by cutting some timber. Um, if it's a Gulf front lot, how big is it? Uh, if it's a 100 foot lot, maybe they can offset the cost by, by buying the 100 foot lot instead of buying into 250 foot lots, keeping one and selling the other one. Um, and it, especially down here being in the real market that we're in, you want to be aware of your zoning because there's certain areas in Gulf Shores and Orange Beach that only allow uh, long-term rentals. So the, the, the minimum you can rent a property for is, is 30 days. Uh, some people might not want to want to do that. Some people might just want to rent it out uh, week to week. Um, you want to be aware of the comps and the trends. Uh, that's where a real estate agent comes into play. Uh, and golf front lots, those can be tricky. 
Uh, is it a first tier lot, which is going to be a lot more expensive than a second or third tier lot? Um, do you have an ITP permit to, to be able to build? That's you know, and it, is it a protected habitat? Uh, if it's wetlands, you know, you can't really build on. You have to build over it. If it's uh, if they find a beach mouse habitat, that's that's another bridge to cross. So those are all things to consider uh, when, when you're buying or selling a golf front lot. Um, also, mineral lot rights. Do you have any? It's not as big a factor in this area as somewhere like Kentucky, where you have people going in their backyard and find oil and you know, turn into millionaires overnight. But it is something that you want to be aware of. If you're buying a business, is it an old gas station? If it's an old gas station, that can be pretty pricey mm -hmm. from all the testing that they have to do, the environmental testing, um, if it hasn't been done so already. Um, importance of using a realtor. You're going to need a knowledgeable, aggressive agent. Uh, some agents just put a sign in the yard and wait, wait for the property to sell. But the more exposure you can get, the better. Uh, I always like to put information boxes up in, in the yards of my listings. It's a great way to generate buzz and traffic. People come by, they see a house or a sign for sale sign in the yard, they hop out and grab a flyer. It's going to have information about pricing, pictures, uh, a few details about the home. Uh, so that's going to pick up some traffic. Uh, open houses are, are really good. Um, and then social media more. Web presence is huge. That's everything. Uh, you want to know about your agent's uh, website, uh, how they advertise it, how many views does it get, uh, different things like that. Facebook's one of the biggest tools we use. Uh, Instagram's a big tool. Not, not, not as much in this market, but in your larger markets, Instagram is, is huge for, for agents in Dallas and New York City and places like that where they have a huge following. And you also want to make sure that your agent takes good pictures. Everybody shops with their eyes. If the pictures don't look good, chances are they, they, you know, they're not going to want to look at it. And then, you know, maybe you need to do a little bit of work. Your agent can tell you, uh, usually paint and landscaping are two of the <coughs> cheaper options to help you sell a house quicker. Um, definitely get with an agent or a contractor, somebody who would know. Uh, before you go spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars on a total remodel, because uh, the market might not justify you pumping that much money into it. You might pump that much money into it, but you might not get it all back, depending on the area. So you definitely want to be aware of the comps and trends. Certainly, right now, granite uh, quartz, those are huge. Uh, glass tile backsplashes, uh, tile showers in your master bath, anything like that is going to help sell a home. Two biggest selling points on a home are always going to be your kitchen and your bathroom, always. Um, Another thing to be aware of, uh, if you have a primary residence in, in Alabama, the government initiated a program last year. If you need a new roof, it's a shingle roof, and it's your primary residence, contact your insurance agent. If you have wind coverage on it, you can get a $10,000 grant from the government to help offset the cost of getting a new roof. Um, and then primary residence, again, you don't have to pay capital gains taxes. If you've been there for 24 months, even if it's right to the day, you don't have to pay capital gains taxes on your primary residence. Um, you know, for sale by owners, uh, typically they, they, they bang their head up against the wall for about six months uh, before they decide to list with, with a real estate agent. Uh, especially in this market, uh, most people won't wait too much for this for sale by owner, which, which is why they're trying, or they're trying to avoid a commission. But you're right, an agent's always going to get a lot more exposure and a lot more eyes on it. They're going to market the property. And 76% uh, of people go with the first real estate agent and answer the phone. So I always have my phone with me. I am 24-7. <laughs> Barring death, sleep, or uh, just not having my phone around or work, being with a client, I'm going to answer the phone or I'm going to call you back. That's why I say always listen to your realtor. <laughs> A lot of people swear by, by Zillow, that's the gospel. Zillow is uh, it's good about getting you in the ballpark. And it's good about establishing a, a fair market where, where both parties are informed or have a good general working knowledge of what the market's doing and what they can command, but it's not going to be exact. Real estate agents are going to deal with that a lot more and, and be a lot more helpful than, than, than Zillow. Um, why? Why your realtor knows best? Again, first-hand knowledge of the market and current trends. Um, valuable advice. <laughs> keep your property clean. If you're listing a property, please keep it clean. Typically, you know what they say about first impressions. They're always the hardest to overcome. When somebody enters your house within the first 30 to 60 seconds, they have a general idea of if they're interested or not. 
We all have little Picasso's. I know I have one at home. We just got through repainting our house because he had taken a marker and drawn all over the walls. Uh, I loved it, but I know if somebody came in to look at my house, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect them the same way that I feel about it. So that's definitely something that you want to be aware of. Uh, and I want to cover the, a little bit about the Remax Advantage. I'm getting very close to wrapping up. I don't know how we're doing on time. But uh, Remax has a lot of advantages. And now I'm not saying okay, I'm not saying that there, there's other companies out there that, that aren't good. Uh, I just believe in the Remax brand. It's one of the most trusted and recognized brands in the entire world. Um, that we have a very strong international presence. Um, they, we have a lot of tools at our disposal that are great. Uh, this, the design center. We can go in there and create flyers for your properties from different templates to market your property. Um, actually, the little flyer that I have out today was one of the things that I, that I found on the design center. Uh, ton of education. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, that you can go and, and research in order to, to improve your skills. Um, again, brand awareness. Remax has been ranked the top real estate franchise for four years in a row. Um, the Remax website is the most visited uh, uh, real estate franchise website uh, in the world uh, with over 48 million views. Um, and Remax leads the industry in pro uh, professional designations. So, you know, we, we, we try to live up to our motto of uh, above the crowd. We, we, we truly aspire to be that way. Um, in closing, why I do what I do? Um, that is my wife, right there. Definitely I'll keep my coverage on that. <laughs> um, and that, that's our son right there. We were eating dinner at the golf that night. But uh, I, you know, I enjoy real estate. Best decision I've ever made. It's been very good to me, very good to my family. Uh, it's great because I set my own hours. If we have an emergency, I can take time off. Uh, don't get a whole lot of time in the summer, but uh, make, try to make up for it from uh, Thanksgiving to New Year's because then right after that, it kicks back up again. Uh, and relationships. I love working with people. First time home buyers, uh, investment property buyers. I love the look on somebody's face when you find the right property. Because they, they can try to hide it, but you, but you know if you found the right one. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close it out. I appreciate all you guys for showing up today and listening to me ramble on a little bit. And, uh, I'm going to open up the floor for questions. I want to make one question. Uh, this was the best decision. <laughs> Great job. Condos that live there don't have someone different every week. And for people who want to live in a condo but don't want in and out people all over, are there any geared towards? There, there are. You got the sands. Uh, now it gets a little confusing because uh, because it, it does. I sold a, a three uh, condominium uh, to a couple of clients last year. They live in full time. They love it during the winter and ready to pull their hair out during the summer. Mm -hmm. So uh, and uh, I tried to prepare them for that, but they they, they love Korea. Yes. Any other questions? All right, let's give one round of applause. Awesome. All right, um, diplomats, uh, if you are interested in uh, serving on the diplomats, see Doug right after this. Uh, let Ed know if you want to serve on other committees. There's a committee for you, and there's action being taken. On the 31st is the next Small Business Council um, meeting, so we'd love to have you consider that as well.